So we're going to start with the guards. Steph Curry is going to end up in high 60s, low 70s in games played, so he's one of them. The other one is James Harden. I don't think I need much of an explanation for that. If we move on to the second team guards, Damian Lillard has to be there. I've seen some people make a case for Dame to actually get first team because he's going to end up with probably about 10 more games played than Steph. I get the argument, but I don't think that's a big enough difference. I think that is a more interesting conversation when it comes to the forward positions. The other one would be Kyrie. I know the Celtics have had all the problems in the world this year, but Kyrie's still been pretty damn awesome. I guess if you wanted to double down on the idea that everybody on the team hates him, but I'm not going to go there with you. Also, just because I'm a Celtics fan, I want to point out Kyrie's all-around game has improved. He's up to seven assists a game and five rebounds, including one offensive board a game. So there's him. For the third team, we've got three guys that I'm thinking of. One is Russell Westbrook. His all-around impact is still there. We have Bradley Beal, who has been carrying the Wizards. And you can say a lot of those same things for Kemba Walker, and we're going to dive into Kemba now. So I know that he came out of the gates on fire and he was maybe the best player in the league after the first 10 games or so this season and the only times the Hornets look like a respectable basketball team are when Kemba's doing this thing so I understand why you'd want to put him here but Bradley Beal has been doing a lot of the same things if we're being honest his efficiency and usage and improvement to things besides scoring have been uh, pretty nuts and as for Westbrook Yeah, you could say all the stuff about his shooting, but he's still a force attacking the rim. His playmaking, his rebounding, and just his general existence. I think defenses are scared more of Westbrook than they are Kemba and Beal for as good as those guys are. And I do think that matters, so I'm comfortable putting Westbrook on one of these uh, third-team slots. And if I'm thinking about these other two... Uh, I do think I'm going to end up going with Bradley Beal. Uh, I love Kemba Walker. He's been amazing for the Hornets, but when you dive into the numbers, I think Beal's just been a little better. So we got Steph and Harden for the first team guards, Kyrie and Dame for second, Westbrook and Beal for third. Apologies to Kemba Walker. If we go to the forwards, Giannis is one of them. That's pretty much all I got for him. Uh, The other forward spot in the first team is pretty interesting, though. I think it's between uh, Kevin Durant, who has weirdly gone under the radar this season with how good he's been, and Paul George, uh, who I think has done a lot to keep OKC afloat, and lately his shooting has fallen off a little bit, and maybe that could be the thing that ends up with uh, Kevin Durant being the winner for me. It's a very interesting thing. I mean, PG definitely got a lot of attention this year, but we have to remember just how good Kevin Durant is, and he's also made strides with his playmaking. So I think I'm going to go with him first team, and I'm going to have Paul George be the first guy on the second team. And now the forward conversation becomes a bit of a doozy. Um, We have the GOAT, who's played 55 games for a Lakers team that's not going to make the playoffs. We have Kawhi Leonard, who is going to play not many more games than LeBron ended up playing. And then we have Blake Griffin, who has played over 70 games for the Pistons. And I feel like what he's done is similar to Kemba and Beal. I mean, his team has a little bit more talent with Drummond and all that, but this team really isn't that great. And Blake has done a lot to carry them. And given how many more games he's played, I kind of feel like going with him for the second team and then putting LeBron James on the All-NBA third team, which is pretty wild. And for whatever reason, Kawhi just didn't want to play a lot of games this year. So, yeah. For our forwards, KD and Giannis, Paul George and Blake Griffin for second team. And then we have Kawhi and LeBron on the third team because they didn't show up to work enough. We move on to the center position. I think it's a race for two guys, really. We got Joel Embiid, and we have Nikola Jokic. Nuggets have had injuries. Also, Jamal Murray and Gary Harris just haven't been that great this season, so Jokic has had to do a lot for them to be one of the top teams in the Western Conference. The thing that I get hung up on, though, is I think Embiid is just better than Jokic. Um, When you look at his dominance on offense and his impact on defense, then I think that just makes him better. But at the same time, you know, the Nuggets defensive rating, I think has either been better or is neck and neck with 
the Sixers all year, which I guess maybe closes the gap between them, even if I think Jokic isn't the direct reason for that. You can make an argument that Jokic is certainly the better offensive player. Yeah, this one's a bit of a doozy. I think I'm going to go Jokic with the games played being the deciding factor, even if I'd rather have Joel Embiid, assuming that he's healthy for the next 10 years. And now for the third team all center, I got to go with Carl Anthony Towns. He's been having pretty much a my player season ever since the Jimmy Butler trade. He is a, a complete one man show for the T-Wolves. Because when you look at the disappointment that Wiggins has been, and maybe Derrick Rose has been good, and Covington's missed a lot of time. So there's some good and some bad, but Towns has just been awesome. Now Rudy Gobert, yeah, I could see the case for him. Defensive player of the year candidate. Jazz are going to make the playoffs. He's one of my favorite players in the league, but sorry. I just think it's Carl Anthony Towns. I don't know what to tell you. I do want to mention um, Anthony Davis real quick. I just can't put him on for all the stuff that happened this year and LaMarcus Aldridge has been great I don't think he's been good enough anyway here's an unprofessional recap for you of the first second and third teams in my opinion uh, feel free to hate me or think I'm crazy for leaving some person off that happens every year it's fine and that's it